I know one thing that you said is like just staying consistent and things like that are just absolutely key. I know like when me and Miss B opened up the school, we had three students. And now we've enrolled over 60 students in a little over two years. And it's just amazing that if you stay consistent with something and you just keep at it, how much you can achieve. And that can be as small scale as coming to school, being on time, staying on task. Uh, same thing with once you get you know, graduated, get your license, try to get it immediately after you graduate and then staying consistent because that's one of the biggest things once you first graduate a lot of people are very very uh particular very um concerned on their client's experience but then over time they get sloppier they start cutting out things consistency is a lot of everything consistency is the the principle that all of these mentors that i've talked about all the people that have helped me consistency is the principle that gets hit on the most um, it's the one that it's that consist if you don't have consistency you really can't have anything else that's what i've learned hey, bro. Uh, these are the, I, I balled out with the balding clippers my blades are a little uh, dull but i don't like to balled out with my trimmers because they weren't made to balled out while they will balled out i like to use the tools for what they were created to do so, uh, with this ball fade, he gets a number one on top. I'm going to bald him out up to his temple peak point, which is where the curve comes to a point right there. And I do one side, then I do the other side, then I use, then I meet it up in the back. Now, the mirror is probably the most important tool that I have because my natural eye and my vision will set me up for failure, but this mirror does not lie. So, just uh, go ahead and bald him out here. And now my clippers are the Bebulus FX673. Uh, they open up to almost a one. They are not zero gapped. Um, so when I bald him out, I'm flicking out just a little bit because I want to be able to take out that line of demarcation. What was that word that we talked about? Not address. Um, uh, diffuse. Diffuse the lines of demarcation. So yeah, it seems like every time I do these lines, uh, I can definitely see or they're not straight or they're not even. Almost every time. Still now today. So the mirror is what saves me. So I just want to make sure that I'm definitely getting good and clean. Alright, so there's one side. So I'll check him in. How do I pop him? It's right there. Alright. So I look in the mirror. I can see when I look in my mirror, it looks straight from where I was standing. But when I look in the mirror, I can see that it comes down right there a little bit. Right? So I'm just going to tap that up because I trust that my mirror is showing me what everybody else sees. So let's check the mirror there. That looks better. So now I'm going to go to the other side. It's Temple Peak Point. It's where I'm balding up to and I'm going to bring it around to the back of the side. And again, making sure to try to keep, uh, keep it clean. You know, I want to actually remove these hairs. I don't want to leave any sprigs. Make sure that I'm paying close attention up above and over his ears because those seem to be areas that uh, tend to, it can be harder to get the hairs off of there. So make sure that I'm moving the clipper against the grain, that the hair is feeding through into the teeth. All right, like that looks good. Now it might be a little drop, but when I turn around into the mirror, I can see that it's dropping. I need to raise it up here and I need to raise it up here. And I think. You may want to grab it by that bottom. Dang it. Somebody hit that for me. I'm not familiar with the chair. I know. I'll buy new ones. Yeah. All right. So check the mirror again. I'm gonna raise it right here, and I'm gonna raise it right there because I want it to be a straight line. Then I'll connect it in the back. Now. How are you scooping that hair out of it? Uh, repetition. Once again. If you, what do you mean? Scooping it out so clean. What do you mean? Be, try to be a little more. 
These are ball displays. It's what they're made to do. It's got a whole motor that's only for ball. So I'm looking right here in the mirror. I can see where the line should go. So I'm gonna start right smack dab in the middle. You said you learned a lot on YouTube. Were you picky, like who you learned from, or did you just watch everything you could? And just everything. Kind of... Sometimes I got tired of hearing different barbers' voices or different techniques, or I wanted to see a different tool being utilized. So um, that's how I kind of switched. What do you think about that Dave Valentine? What do I think about who? Dave Valentine. Valentine. Jay? Dave, I think. Mm, I'm not familiar with him if his name's Dave. There's a guy named Jay Valentine or Valentine that uh, actually was at the MLB, Major League Barber yeah, Expo is. that I just went to. Uh, and that dude's a cool dude. Very humble. A lot of these dudes are, what I'm finding when I go to these trade shows is I'm finding that my favorite barbers are just regular dudes. They're just regular dudes. The only difference between the platform barber and the student is the distance that we create. Some of the platform barbers want you to stay a student to them so that way they can feel like they're special. Um, and then we as students look up to them and think that we can never be on that level. But it's just not true. The same thing that's available to me is available to everybody else. So I'm pleased with that. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. You could still tighten that up. There's no such thing as a perfect haircut. And any haircut, you're always gonna be able to find something. So I'm not gonna sit here in the interest of time and um, you know, make sure, but ideally you want this line to be as good as you can. You always wanna keep your client clean. I right, everything I'm saying you should do, I'm just saying what I do. Keep my client clean so that way I can see what I'm removing. So this is the Vegas FX 673. I like gorgeous clippers because if you ever deal with kids, it makes it super easy. They wanna squirm, you can go wherever you need to go. It makes it really easy. So I'm opening it up all the way. This opens up to uh, right out of one, or excuse me, right out of uh, a little bit bigger than half. So, and I'm gonna create a bar. Anybody seen the bars on YouTube videos? You guys have learned about the bars? So that's what I'm gonna do. When I get to the top, I'm gonna flip out, right? So. And again, I'm gonna start with one side, and then I'm gonna go to the other side. I'm sorry? Craig got good hair. Yeah, Craig does have good hair. You know, like, he doesn't have good hair. Why are you switching the clippers? I'm sorry? Why are you switching the clippers? When you say switching the clippers, what do you mean? Because it's going to be the bottom. The bottom. These are more of a big clipper that's the ball. Oh, yeah, that clipper only balls. It doesn't have a lever. There's no adjustment. It's like a huge motor on a trimmer. It's the only thing it does. So I put a bar on that side, bar on this side. I'm gonna look in the mirror, make sure that it's even. And I can see that this side is a little bit lower than this side. So I'm gonna come back around. I'm gonna raise this up just a little bit to match the other one. That's about it. And then I'm going to remove the hair in the back. A lot of people create a bar and then take that bar out. I've faded four or five different ways. If you watch the YouTube video where I did the bald fade on him, um, I actually faded a different way back then um, than what I'm doing today. But you just find what works for you, and you will. Have no fear. The things that you fear, um, you will work them out with repetition. So the more cosmetologists fade down, oh, what is this? Yeah, it's fading off. I don't know what uh, other people do. The way I do what I do is because I just watch the YouTube videos. That's it, I literally learned how to cut hair on YouTube. Most people fade up. I've recently learned a little bit about fading down. Uh, and for me, it can be a safer way to fade, but I don't do it most of the time. So again, he's gonna be a one open on, up top. This is a no guard, so this is the one open. So I'm gonna remove all of this hair with this guard. So I can be kind of, uh, you know, a little faster with it. Don't have to be as precise. I'm using my comb. Uh, making sure that I'm removing the hair because the difference between a good haircut and a great haircut I've been told and my experience shows that it's in the details um, So if you leave sprigs laying everywhere it, It'll be noticed and you might not even know why this haircut isn't a dope haircut But it'll be just because the little things that were left 
Now, do you ever just do clipper over comb or do you always use scarves? Uh, I do use clipper over comb. When the hair is a little bit longer normally, I don't. When it comes to this size of hair, me personally, I don't clipper over comb. I have seen people that do it. Uh, different hair textures. If I'm using tightly curled hair, if I'm on tightly curled hair, I might do clipper over comb for sure. Um, but it's, it's just one of those variable uh, depends type things. Any questions, any thoughts on the haircut or anything that we've discussed? Any question that you've had that we haven't addressed? Anybody? Is there anything you do like stamina wise, say you have hair 14 hours a day, you know, to save your back or anything like that? Like in soles? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, seriously, uh, I guess the soles is what some people say, but um, Ultra Boost, I bought Ultra Boost, I bought Adidas Boost shoes. It's the softest shoe I've ever put on in my life, and uh, so that helps. But what I also find is that when I'm super passionate about this, as much as I love to do this, I don't get tired. I mean, I really don't until I get home and realize that, man, I've been cutting for 14 hours. Um, I get tired. It's weird, but. I think one thing that also helps is scheduling time to take care of yourself. Just because if you don't take care of your own appearance, a lot of the times clients may not give you a chance. Zero. I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna close it up, and I'm gonna go with this line. What was that guard? It's a zero. Zero close. I'm sorry. Yes, zero close. And I'm gonna take out the bald line last. So, zero close, going for this line. Because I, I gotta flick up, because again, my clippers aren't zero gap, so I might have to do a little bit of extra work here at the bottom line, I'm not sure yet. It's been a while since I cut Craig's hair. So, I'm just using the corner teeth uh, to help mess with this line. And I'm just raising it up a little bit. I know it looks like I'm using the whole clipper, but I'm really not. I'm just using the corner. So I'm going back and forth. And sometimes I have to move the clipper in a circle. Whatever I have to do to make that hair feed into it, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to pop it up just a little bit. Just barely touching my lever. Raising it up. Again, still using only the corners. And I'm really just removing a little bit of hair at a time. Because something that's helped me is to understand from the beginning is that I can always remove more hair. But once I find myself in a spot where I have removed too much hair, there's no coming back from that. So just removing a little bit of hair at a time, combing it out, checking. I still see uh, a little line of demarcation that needs to be diffused, but I'm gonna come back after that with the touch up. Right now, I just wanna put the base fade on. And as I'm going in a circle, I'm flicking out. Like I'm, I'm going after the line that I see, but I'm coming out. And, and that circular motion is making sure that I don't go too far in. So I did that side. I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna check my mirror, see what it looks like, so that way I can address something in the touch up. And again, just using these three teeth right here. I guess those hand is dark, but I'm like a lot of different clippers. It's true. Uh, these clippers actually also okay. work with the wall premium guards. Okay. So you can use whatever guards you want with this clipper. Again, I don't. Uh, indoors or stand behind one clipper and not another, I say buy and use all of them. Find out what you like, find out what's good for you. I'm gonna close it, see this is that intuitive thing. I didn't take enough of that out, so I'm gonna go back down and knock a little bit more of that out. And again, all of this stuff will come naturally to you. If it came naturally to me, it'll come naturally to you through repetition. You can always open all the way up, and if you see something that's not coming out, you can close. Okay, it's not taking it away, I can close it. And just continue to pick. But I'll come back to that in the details. Now, I've done both sides. The only thing that I have left is to bring this back together in the back. You can see the line. So, close it up again. The right three teeth and the left three teeth are the only thing that I'm going to use. If you have any questions, feel free to move around. Feel free to come and look at the haircut, whatever. You need to do. You're not going to crowd me. You're not going to get on my nerves, crowd my space, or anything like that. So now I'm going to bump it up again, and I'm going to come a little bit higher than I just did. Now I asked you this question earlier today. I'm going to ask it again so everyone uh, can 
gets a chance to hear it. Of course. Now, for instance, if uh, your client comes in and he has a straighter hair texture and he shows you a picture and it's a curlier hair texture or it's a guy with a lot fuller hair than him, how do you break it to him that that ain't gonna happen? Well, I'm going to bring out, he's mad at that. I'm gonna bring out uh, <laughs> obvious, for instance, if they want like a sharp hairline and they don't have hairlines, there's enhancement services that I can do. Um, but I wanna point to the differences in the picture that he provided in his haircut. If a client has curly hair and he has straight hair, then I need him to understand that the reason why this looks so dense and this fade is so tight is because his hair is tightly curled in this area. Your hair is straight, so when I put this fade on this hair type, the final product is not gonna be what you're showing. Then I'll suggest and try to move towards based on the relationship that I've built with the client, understanding his personality. Is he trying to be cool? Is he slick? Is he just somebody's dad? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want, I've got guys, I've got old men who are like balding and they want hard parts. And I have to tell them like, the hard part ain't for you. And it's cool, man, you know, and I tell my clients, like really the thing that shows the most is your confidence. So when you walk around self-conscious that your hair don't look good, that's the, th nobody notices your hair but you, you know, really. Um, so yeah, I just try to break it easy to them and, and offer an alternative that they'll be happy with based on uh, what I know about my client. Which is why it's important to ask new clients, you know, questions like, so what do you do? What are you into? Do you have any kids? Where do you work? You know, uh, enjoy your job. You know, get to know the clients. So just try to find an alternative. Try to figure out, because a lot of clients will ask for something uh, but what they're showing you is not actually what they want. What they really want is just to look cool for the club. Or what they really want is to look good for the night. Or what they really want is to just to find a hairstyle that makes them look presentable that they don't have to style in the morning, that they don't have to deal with. And if you can figure that out, then you can find something that's going to work for them. If a client wants a fade, um, and he keeps, if he comes in and says, yeah, I normally get a number one to a number three fade, I'm like, okay, let's talk about what you're trying to do. Because I have people that come and try to say that all the time. Let me get a number one to a number three. And it's like, okay, I can give you a number one to a number three, but you won't actually see the fade because if I do a number one to a number three, um, the contrast is going to be so minimal that you're really not even going to be able to see the fade. So they'll say, yeah, actually, that's what I want. I want to be able to see the fade. So I'll say, okay, let's do a shadow fade. I'll start my zero guard open, and I'll take you into like a three open. So it's essentially going to be like from a one to a sheer cut length, and you'll be able to see a little bit of fade. Um, so just offering suggestions, being familiar with your client. All right, so here's um, the bald line, right? So when I put my bald line in, I tried to flick out because it's important to flick out so that way you don't leave the line of demarcation. Then I can also see some other lines of demarcation. Who knows what line of demarcation is? Everybody? Nobody. Okay, a line of demarcation. Your barber's eye will develop as you continue to cut hair. Can everybody see where this is darker than the bar below it? Can everybody see that? I'm still learning how to pull this out myself, right? Can you see how that's darker than that? Right? I want the fade to be consistent. You see how that's darker than that? That is a line of demarcation, right? So we want to pull that out. Most people won't see it, but us as barbers, when we really want to tighten our skills, we're going to learn how to take that out. You see it? You see what I'm talking about? You see it? Okay. So I'm going to address that in a minute. Right now, I have this bald line, which is also a line of demarcation. So, I put it in with my balding clipper and I tried to flick out, so that way, obviously, I could kind of begin the fade, right? So I could start with the bald and then kind of coming out. That's so, what I was going to ask you, though. When, you, when you're taking that line out, how far above that line do you actually want to go? It will become intuitive. I'm going to show you exactly what I do, but what I find is that what the barber said on YouTube was a little bit different. Like, most of them said, like, a quarter inch. I find sometimes I go a half inch. Yeah. Practice in here. Do different. Do a quarter inch sometimes, then do a half inch. I find that I've been going up higher and it creates a better cut. So again, these you can see these are nowhere near zero gap. Like there's plenty of space. Can you see? They're, they're not anywhere, they're not even close to zero gap, right? Everybody see that? So I'm closing them. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to come up to probably about right here and I'm always going to flick out. The flick out always helps with the fade and I'm still going to use the corner teeth and take away as little bit of hair as I can so that way when I'm ready to take, you know, I can just watch it slowly. And I switch to this brush because I'm getting to the finer hair and I want to be able to see what I'm doing. Sometimes also I'll pull the client's skin down so that way I can get up under it. His head's a little moist. You notice this stuff? It's a little warm in here. 
So you have to kind of work a little harder when the client is hot or whatever, but it's cool. We learn how to work around that. So using the corner of my teeth, just start picking it away. And that flicking out is the thing that makes all the difference. And you can see that it is going away. So if it's going away and it's working, I don't really want to stretch the skin because I like what it's doing. If what you're doing is working. Now when I go this way, I'm using my right teeth. When I go back left, I flip the clipper. So it looks like I'm using the middle, but I'm really not. Cool. So wipe that away. Can you see how the line's going away? Right? Anybody? No? All right, cool. So I'm going to pop this open just a little bit. These clippers, you get about one, two, three, four, sometimes five. So I'm going to open just a little bit. And I'm going to continue to make sure that I'm going against the grain. Now it's time to his hair wasn't going away. So now I'm going to stretch his skin. Pop it open a little more again. just continuing to work to diffuse that line that I've identified that you will be able to identify when your eye, your barber eye, uh, takes place, you know, it's going to increase. And now I'm just kind of working on these corners. Now I know that I balled it up, I didn't ball it that high, so I'm going to stop there because I think my zero guard closed is going to take that out. Right now I'm looking, I like the way that's faded into there, and there's my next line of demarcation. I'm going to leave that alone and I'm going to go to the other side. Same thing over here, with the corners. Don't be scared to manipulate your client's ears, face, head, put their neck where you need it to be, um, because your job is to give them a good cut. They sat in your chair because they trust you, don't be scared of it. Pop it open just a little more, and I'm going just a little bit higher. Being careful to go at an angle that the hair feeds into the clipper. And even though it's very minimal and you can't really tell, I'm still flicking outward. As I hit that line, there's an outward flick that's taking place that I can exaggerate for you and show you, but you'll learn how to do it. Now see that there's still a line of demarcation right there, so I'm going to stretch the skin. I'm just going to pop it up. Also, pay attention to how he's holding the clippers. If you don't want to hold the clippers with too tight of a grip. You want to hold it more loosely. Yeah. That speaks to your clients whether you are nervous or whether you are comfortable and confident. A lot of the times the clients will be like, uh, you know what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. My instructor, when I was in school, held the clippers like this. And she moved the lever like this. And I knew that she was not going to be able to teach me how to cut hair because I knew that she didn't really know. I knew she was leaning it because, I mean, she really did like this. And she looked so uncomfortable. And even as a student, I knew that she wasn't comfortable cutting here. So now, um, back here on his occipital right here, you can see that there's an angle right there. I need to pull his skin up so I can uh, get back to diffusing that skin line. I'm just gonna work at it and I'm still flicking up even though you might not be able to see it. Now I'm gonna open just a little bit. Continue the brush, open up just a little bit more. And now I'm kind of just attacking the dark spots because really I'm satisfied with the way that's faded. So really I'm just going after the spots that I see that are dark. Now I'm open all the way and just for good measure I'm finishing out that line. So unfinished haircut but there is a bald fade on him. So I turn him to the side. I'm looking in the mirror. I don't see a line of demarcation on him. That's good news. Continuing to turn him around utilizing my mirror. Everything looks good in the mirror. Now, I do see a mark. Also, I do this. When I see a mark in the mirror, I put my finger on it in real time like this, and then I come back and look at it, because a lot of times I can't see it. And it has, is actually the skin line. So I'm gonna come back at it with my clippers. The line is right here. So I'm gonna come back, close my clippers up, stretch the skin, and I'm gonna start going at it, popping up. Just a little bit, I'm gonna brush it. Now, there's something that I'm learning too that happens with the fade. Sometimes my expectation gets too high and you pick a cut to death. So now I'm gonna go back to my zero guard right here because I can see how heavy this is. And this is called the touch up. This is where uh, the blend really creates itself for me in the way that I cut hair. Um, 
coming back to my uh, Vincent carbon comb. These carbon combs are awesome. They remove hair that well, they just have a knack for picking up hair. So I think closed is going to be too close. So just to be safe, I'm going to open this about halfway. And I'm going to start. Can everybody see how this is dark and this is light? Can you guys see that? Okay. So this is dark, this is light. So I'm going to open this up about halfway because I know that all the way opens around here somewhere. And I'm just going to start going after that, seeing if I can blend it out just a little bit. Now, are you using full guard or are you only using a partial amount? Always. Always using the corner on either side. When I'm going this way, I'm using the right corner. When I go this way, I'm using my left corner. There's three fade positions. You have right under, which is the right part of my blade. This is line of demarcation. The right part of my blade, under, and then you have left under, so you go right under, you have left under, and then you have right over and left over. So it's just, you have to feed against the grain. That's the point. You have to make sure that the hair is feeding in. If you're not feeding the hair into the clippers, you're not doing a hair cut. So I'm just making sure to go against the grain and just trying to spread this blend out a little bit to where I like it. You know, really, I could probably line him up right now, send him out. He would not see this line of demarcation, but you will, your tolerance for what's acceptable will grow. Do you guys see how that blended out? You see? How do you know when it's time to quit nitpicking the hair cut and just let it go? Um, really, I'm trying to go just like one extra step. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to hit these one more time and then let it go. Um, if you understand that repetition is going to make you better and you believe that, then find something that's acceptable. Really, the bottom line is, is your client happy? That's the only thing that matters, straight up. If the client's happy, cool. Unless you just drew something in the back of their head that looks crazy, who cares? If your client's satisfied with the service, that's what matters. Too many barbers cut hair to impress other barbers. That's not what it's about. Because other barbers aren't paying your bills. It's the client that's in your chair. So if your client's happy, run. So yeah, I'm gonna stop Nick picking this haircut. You know? So now that I've done that, I'm going to again move the hair, get on the lineup. And this haircut normally in the shop takes about 17 to 20 minutes. But because my clients book a 30 minute time slot, I try to give them at least 25 to 30 minutes, taking my time as far as nitpicking how long. If I've got the haircut pretty good in 17 minutes, you know, I try to stay on schedule and stay on time. So, uh, normally, huh? Paying for the service, right? Right. So with his hairline, he's got hair that goes both directions, right? He's got a part on his hairline. So this kind of presents a dilemma. Matter of fact, now that I'm noticing that and I'm here, I'm going to pick up my clippers again. I know that it's a number one on top. I want to go ahead and make sure I hit against the grain on that to make sure that it's easy. That's important. Because if not, when his hair grows out, that hair will be longer than everything else. So, and I see that even though I know this is a one open and this is a one open, this is still darker than this. So I'm going to close my clipper just a little bit because I want it to look the same. Even if it's not actually the same, I want it all to blend. I love you. Yeah, I remember this was always important, Chris. No other barber ever did that. Never. I'm gonna close it just a little bit more actually. So now it looks the same, right? Because this hair in the front, it looks the same, but this is actually a lot shorter than this hair. So I'm going with my cordless, these are slimline LIs. Uh, with his lineup, his hairline kind of gets weak right here in the corner, so you want to pay attention to that. And I'm just gonna start right here in the front. And I don't want to push him back. And I'm making sure that I go against the grain uh, with his hair, that his hair is being removed. And I'm just barely touching, nothing crazy. Everybody can't have, a, here, here's one of those instances. Everybody can't have a super duper rooper crispy hairline. You do your best. Keep it natural. Now, what do you do if someone is receding back severely? 
Do you just line up the front? I'll just line it up around? across the front. I will, and, and, or I'll ask them. Um, sometimes, you know, when you develop the relationships with your client, actually, I'm gonna turn him around just a little bit. You guys can look in the mirror, because I kind of want to stand in front of him so I can get a good straight on visual. Um, you'll get to know your clients, and you'll get to know what their preferences are and what they want to do. So you'll learn about, do they want you to push them back? Is that crispy line, would they rather be pushed back to have a crispy line or would they rather leave it natural? It's all kind of a personality thing. And then once again, back in the mirror, looks like this is a little bit higher than that, so I can come back around, but. I'm now, gonna... real quick, yes, how do you start your line? How, like I know a lot of people are very intimidated by doing the front hairline. What is your am... step? Well, when I was in school, to be honest, I'm still, learning about hairlines. I'm still practicing. Um, but I always start in the front, for sure. And I always do a straight line right here. I just remove enough hair to make sure that I can see that this is straight. And then I stand directly in front of my client. I won't, I'll put their face wherever I need it to be. Um, and I just remove minimal amounts of hair. Again, I can always remove more. But I was the guy. They asked me to line up a dude in school. Um, and he was asking me to push him back a little bit. And I was like, no, I'm scared. I don't know how to do it. So. What do you do if somebody comes to the shop, shows you a picture of something that they want, and inside you don't feel comfortable doing it, or you know that you possibly can't give them what they want? Do you just be up front with them, or just tell them to sit down and just try your best if you want? I never don't do a haircut. Um, never what? Don't do a haircut. Um, when I was in school, I tried to make sure that I got as many intimidating haircuts as I could while I was here. These are my hitters. That's why I, I switched, because these are going to put the crispy line on. I just did like an outline. But being in the field now, mm -hmm. would you do that intimidating cut? Would I do what? That intimidating cut now. I do regularly. I do regularly. Absolutely, I would. Because I've watched enough videos to know how to get myself out of a sticky situation, and I know how to make a passable haircut. Even if I can't make it like, you know, crazy awesome like the picture might look, I know how to make it passable. So, right now I'm just tapping his hairline, I'm just trying to put that crisp factor, because Craig is one of the dudes, he likes a crispy hairline, so I give, me what, give him what he wants to the most part. You can see where he receives right here, right? You see where he goes in back? Like, normally his line should go there, but you can see where he receives. You just can't have, I'm not gonna push him back that far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crisp this up, right here. And you can see it on the other side here too. No, he's pretty good there. Right here is where he's like. Let me see on that. Here, I'll, shoot. I'll try to twist him over. Now, as far as your technique when you line it up, are you still using the same technique, like the only corners of the, of no. the blade or? No, I'm using a, a tapping technique. There's something about that I've learned. You can see right here, he doesn't really have a line right here. Right, and you can see how it goes back right here. Does everybody see that? How this goes back, but you can see the natural line wants to go straight down. There's something about tapping a good pair of trimmers that will create a line because you're removing the vellus hair. And you can't really see the vellus hair here, but when you remove it and the skin contrasts, it makes a line. So all I'm gonna do is lightly tap on his line. Now where he's receding, that's not gonna go away. But when I tap him like that and the vellus hair gets removed, then I go back with the razor. That creates, do you see the line? When you create that corner and then that line there, you see how it sharpens it up? So it's enhancing what he already has. I'm not creating anything brand new. And then I'm doing the same thing over here, just tapping. And then the important part is that corner. If you can get that corner at a good 90 degree angle, Here's the image that the whole line is good. Come back, just cleaning him up a little bit. And now I'm nitpicking again, because I can see just a little part. So I go back to my balding clippers, and there's a line of demarcation where I didn't flick out enough, right? This is what I should have been doing when I balled it out, was flicked up. And now that I see the line, I can just go back in here, stretch the skin. And I can do what I should have done in the first place. That takes that out. So again, nitpicking will sit here forever. 
So one of the things that holds the most value with my clients is when it comes time to line them up, I always lean my clients back. Talking about the experience, talking about the different stuff that you use, um, I always, always, always lean my clients back for beard trims and for uh, the razor. There's just something about going horizontal. There's a lot of barber shops you sit down and you never get moved, you never get any treatment. But when I lean you back, and this goes forward or backward, which way? Forward. Uh, try backward then. Alright, lean back. See if you can go back. There you go. There we go. Alright, cool. So, there's just something about this to add to the service. They get to relax. It's not hard to relax and feel good about yourself from a horizontal situation. So. Just apply the shave down. I'm not actually touching this to the skin. Um, it can be sanitized and disinfected, but to do that if I don't have to. Anybody got a razor I think I brought? Maybe it's in my car. Anybody have a, a blade? What about <coughs> calories? Is that starting to take me to use to cut calories? Um, just make sure I'm going against the grain. Sometimes I go with the grain, actually. Again, this is one of those places where you want the hair to appear to be the same length, even if it's not that single blade. Now, are these the disinfected uh, blades, or are these the ones that I need to clean with alcohol first? You need to clean with alcohol okay, first. Cool. Because a lot of people don't know that a lot of these blades, when they come from the manufacturer, they think that they're disinfected, but they're actually not. I learned this at 8 a.m. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, just getting set up in here. Every client gets a new razor blade. Right. And uh, I'm using an exposed blade razor. Extra exposed. It's a little bit more, uh, you can do more details, but it's also a little bit more they dangerous. They've got the new one out, don't they? It's got three different levels. Oh, 245 does have a yeah. triple exposed razor. And let me tell you, that triple exposure... I just ordered one, but gave it away. <laughs> yeah. Looking for a towel. I'm have a towel. Can someone grow, run back to the uh, dryer? They're not in there. Thank you. Yo, what's up with the, those straight razors that, you know, got the leather belts? We see, I, I, I've seen that in the book. The traditional like, straight razor? Yeah. They're just... The traditional style that was. I think they might have just passed the law back to where you can, but I can't say for sure. I don't have. You can use them. Yeah. You just just do normal. Well, they're not unsanitary. You just uh, just as if you were doing a comb, antibacterial soap, barbicide, putting in a closed container. But. Um, she would know better than I could. I know that if something's porous, it can't be uh, it can't be sterilized and sanitized. Um, so I mean, if it's not porous, it should be able to be. But again, I would defer to her because I wouldn't pass on any information that I don't have. And the truth is, I just don't know. So his hairline, his hairline is there's nothing wrong with his hairline. Also, something about being over them when I do the hairline is very easy. Like I can look, and it's not hard for me to tell if his hairline is even. Um, so I'm not going to push him back. I've got his hairline where I want it. All I'm really going to be doing is removing the vellus hair off his forehead and backing it up to try to just sharpen the implant a little bit. So I've got the blade here. I've got a sanitary blade. Uh, and I'm just using my thumb. And these gloves help with the friction too. I'm just pushing back. And I'm using the shave gel to let me know when I'm in the right place. Now one thing I would say is I don't think that the... Um Conventional straight razors are very practical. I prefer, you know, a changeable blade myself. But if that's what you want to do, more power to you. I'd probably tend to agree. Me personally, as far as the time that it takes to stroke and hone a blade, as opposed to open this up, um, spray it down, and do that. I'd just rather do this. Uh, I don't know. I've never done it. Well, Usually about five to six times. Yeah, you don't have to um, hone it every time, but most of the time you do strop it in between because it will like refine the edge. Okay, never so, so often, if I ever hear you, you have to go have them rebuild it. 
And we do have a strop and a hone that if you are interested in learning how to do that, you can practice. So with his line right there, I'm keeping in mind that that's his weak area. Creating a line there. Not going to push him back. Not going to get into that area. Really focusing on uh, this right angle in his corners. And you said gloves help with friction over any other perks, I guess, to using gloves other than just sanitary reason. There are a lot of perks to wearing gloves for me. And I'll give you the reasons why I wear gloves. Me personally, um, I'm hypersensitive to hair splinters. And every time I get a hair splinter, it is so frustrating. Yeah, I have to I have to stop my service, it does. I have to remove the hair, and it just gets on my nerves. They itch, I don't like them. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing is when I'm doing beard trims and stuff like that, uh, I can touch around his mouth. His he don't have to worry about what's been on my fingers. Hey, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, awkward. Yeah, I also don't have to worry about what he had for lunch getting on my hands, because I don't want to touch nobody's stuff either. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove this shave gel, because you see you got these crispy lines, but it's fake because, I mean, it's not there, so I'm just going to remove that gel, and then I'm going to go back and tap it one more time. But, yeah, uh, also, uh, reports from the customers, and I remember when I first started watching YouTube videos, I thought the same thing. When the clients come in and they see you wearing gloves, there's something about that that says professional um, to them. Also, as a barber, I'm looking to raise the value of my services, so I'm out, if I'm investing, right, these gloves cost money. You have to pay for them. Everybody gets a new glove. Um, that's an investment. That's why haircuts at my shop are $20. Haircut and beard trim is $25. That's why most people pay $30 to $35 bucks every service. Now, what gloves do you use? Do you use latex-free or anything in particular? Yeah, no, no, no. These are uh, Dynarex, um, allergy. Th these are the ones that will not affect anybody that has a latex allergy. Uh, I forget the vocabulary, but... It's uh, not trauma. No. Yes, yeah. that. Yeah, we're using the word. That's exactly what we're using. Um... Another thing, right, when I'm styling my client's hair, I have gloves on, so I put the pomade in my hands, I run it through their hair, and I start to style their hair. When I'm done with their service, I just remove the gloves. I don't have to excuse myself to the sink uh, before I can begin the next service, before I can ring them up on my square reader. I just remove the gloves, and my hands are still clean and sanitary like they were when I started. I'd say that probably saves a lot with light. You know, your hands cracking from having to wash them so much throughout the day. You know what else it saves a lot of? Time. You know what time is? That's exactly right. All right, so come on up. And then this is the point where um, I would hand my client the mirror and I would ask him what he thinks about his cut. Anybody got a mirror? Does anybody have any thoughts or any questions about techniques or anything at all? Just a basic bald fade, there's nothing crazy about it. Now when they have a lot more hair than that, mm -hmm. do you still do the same? You start on the side, each side, and Every then time, yeah. Connect in the middle yeah. Of the and you know what? That's liable to change. That's liable to change. Uh, I'll change it. If I see a new technique, I'll try it. Like on a Monday, sometimes, sometimes I'm not. Like my, my schedule is usually 80 to 90% booked. But sometimes my schedule is only like 50% booked. And I don't know what the difference is. I don't know why. Um, there will be a Monday where, like, you know, I've got gaps, but it's cool. I'm usually not mad when I get a break because I stay so busy. Um, but yeah, when I get those slow times, if I've seen a new technique, and I'm just gonna come back and clean his neck off, and I'm gonna kind of remove his shirt, and I'm gonna try to get all the way down in here, and I'm gonna go up because I don't wanna push the hair down and put the hair in his shirt. But uh, yeah, when I get time in the shop, or if I know, say, I've got a design client, or if I just don't have another appointment, sometimes I'll find out if my client's in a hurry, I'll just take my time. I'll just practice new techniques just for the sake of repetition once again. And he doesn't have a lot of neck hair at all, but we're still gonna run the quickest builder and get what he's got. Again, I always like to move the shirt out of the way and kind of go down a little bit further because a lot of these guys have to do this at home anyway. A lot of the older guys, they don't have somebody to do it. They don't have a wife or something like that. And we're served, you know, we want them to leave clean and. Uh, you know, taking the hair off of their neck and removing it out of their shirt may be the only reason why that 50-year-old guy that wants a hard part of his bald fade bald is your return client.
You know what I mean? And even if you don't see any hair there, still go over it just because a lot of times people have the Velis Lanugo hair there. And uh, once they get out into the sunlight, it'll be glistening in the sun. I usually don't ask people if they want me to remove their ear hair because that's almost always a yes. Um, but a lot of times I'll ask if they want their eyebrows just trimmed. Now I'm not gonna, at my barber shop, I'm not gonna be arching and razoring and shaping eyebrows. That's gonna cost extra. But if somebody wants me to put the comb on it and trim it, we'll do that. Um, but then the most uh, important part of finishing is just to make sure that your client doesn't wear this hair out of here. So you can fold it here in the front. You guys probably already know. If you're like this, carry it out of here, and then you can send them on their way. Clean and, and, so, oh, and then you see that, right? Sometimes the client sits up and the cape doesn't, you know what I'm saying? So they get hair on their back. No one will let them walk out like that for sure. So if you got a squirmy client, make sure to check their back before you get out of here. <laughs> oh, and always make it the client's fault if you make a mistake. <laughs> That's the safest way. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. Good? Yeah, man. I think you're good. No, I, I, I can cut it. Oh, wait, sure.